Hi there, today on Typical Books, it is a wrap up for the year, an entire year. I haven't made as many videos because I haven't been reading as many books lately. So I wanna talk about that aspect of going into 2024. I have been doing the 100 book reading challenge, but the 25 book version of that because I'm a newbie and a bit of a wimp. And I've been doing okay. I think I've read about 10 books. I realized today I needed to count them, but we'll talk about a little bit of what I'm reading right now anyway, and the next review to come up, but 2024. I've been watching other people's wrap up videos, and the one that stuck out to me most recently was Crystals from Fiber Artsy, because I have a lot of the same sentiments. I want to chill and have fun, but language learning is also part of the lifestyle goals, I suppose, for 2024. I'm not a big goal setter, hence my not doing very well with 25 books. I really thought I would have 25 books read by December, but I have been embracing slow reading, which I talked about in a previous video, and really enjoying reading less books. So that's going to be a theme going into 2024. So the three overarching things I want to talk about today are reading and making more videos, podcasting, because you know, if you know, I am a co-host of a podcast, and this is technically a podcast as well, if you think of it in terms of YouTube podcasting, and I have them written on my iPad here, lifestyle. So that's a very small thing I want to talk about. I don't really talk about like lifestyle stuff because at the risk of turning into a lifestyle channel, my husband has recently purchased me the most wonderful Margot Elena perfume and I'm not going to turn into a lifestyle channel, but, but that sort of stuff makes the show, right? Like we all have a life outside of reading books and it's our personalities that shine through and also dictate what we read and our opinions on it, right? So a little more chill lifestyle. And in Crystal's case on her video, I highly recommend going and checking out everyone's 2024 plans and 2023 wrap up videos. But I re it really resonated with me to like chill and relax and embrace stress-free environments and maybe read a little less to live more life. So I have been reading a little less and I've been really enjoying what I've been reading. So Alex E. Harrow's book, Starling House. This was a book of the month club selection and I have another on the way that is remaining in its box because I haven't read 25 books yet. I did say I could receive them. I didn't say I was going to unbox them and read them. So I'm going to like try and not read any other books till I've read 25 of them off my shelves. But yeah, Starling House was great fun. I really, really enjoyed this. And this will be the next review coming up on the show. Old Habits Do Die Hard. I am reading four books at once right now. <laughs> and one of them is an ebook. I'm reading Carney by R. St. Clair, who you may know as Regina from Regina's Haunted Library. I'm also a patron of hers on her Patreon, and we all received the chance to read it. So far, I've only read two books on my Kindle, and one of them is Hog by Samuel R. Delaney, which I am not entirely finished, but I've shelved for the time being because there were so many other interesting books that I wanted to get to, like Skin Flicks by Duncan Ralston, having fun with that. Uh, Moth Woman by Nicole Cushing, which I had mentioned in the previous video as well as the other one, but this I didn't mention. It was in the pile, but I didn't mention it because I have no novellas to really read. I had done a video about the novellas that I read in the last year and highly recommend them all. Death Follows. This is fun so far. I picked it up during work the other day at a slow moment and got a few pages in, so I might double check my shelves again for any other graphic novels that I haven't read yet, because that is kith and kin to a short read of a novella, I think. But going into 2024, I do want to read less books. Maybe I will do some fun things like challenges of reading things that are already in this house, because that's another part of this goal is to read more that is already here on my shelves and the shelves upstairs. I have at my disposal a very robust, if not complete, Junji Ito collection. So my husband collects that. I can definitely pick up Junji Ito at any time, which is of interest to me. So maybe that will be something that I do this year. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a goal because I talked about trying that maybe last year uh, here in the house, but uh, 
I didn't really publicize that I was going to do that as a goal because goals, goals are weird. Goals and me don't really get along. I do have a really good VC Andrews collection that I can always pick up off of, as well as continuing to read all my layman. So I have a lot of fun things to do that way that already exist within this house. As far as a real goal though, like a goal goal, I want to read more nonfiction and true crime because I really enjoy that. Last year, for whatever reason, I read a lot less nonfiction. And when I finally got around to reading Naomi Klein's Doppelganger, I realized how how enjoyable it is that's so very me to get into something meaty and brainy and cerebral and learn new things even you know so i really enjoyed that although i didn't learn much from doppelganger it was purely an enjoyment read an entertainment read uh think piece long form journalism kind of thing but i wouldn't mind learning new things too but true crime as well where you don't really learn much from true crime unless you're reading something by dr murder lee meller uh, of Murder Was a Case fame, a podcast that no longer exists, and Citizen Detective fame, and Lee Miller himself fame. Dr. Lee Miller is one of my heroes as far as true crime goes. And of course, Catherine Ramsland, two of my favorite true crime writers and doctors. Which leads me into the podcasting portion of the show. Uh, as I mentioned, I do co-host a podcast with my wonderful co-host, Wes Dead Air Knipe at Dead air splatterpictures.net podcast and the reason why i always refer to it as dead air splatterpictures.net is because there's so many podcasts called dead air but we've been around for over 10 years so it's not like we're going to change our name anytime soon dead air podcast or dead air splatter pictures splatter pictures dead air podcast however you want to refer to it i mean i think that alexa and google uh, do listen to all of those so you can call it whatever you want and you will find us <laughs> but yeah, uh, I take a lot of breaks and hiatus from the show. That's one thing that I'm very bad for. Wes is a lot more reliable as far as finding time to do the show. Uh, but as he's pointed out on numerous episodes, I do the editing. So if I don't have time to edit, there's, should, there's no time to record, right? I do want to prioritize the show a little better in the next year or two and uh, see how that goes because it's been doing really well and I want it just to do better. So the other part of that for our podcast is to research a little better. And this is sort of stuff that will trickle down into this show as well because I treat it as a podcast to a certain extent and even more so now that I'm doing sit down, right? Standing up is a different feeling. I don't know if anyone is a professional at this, but sitting down is a whole different vibe uh, as far as creating this particular show. So if you can explain to me the psychology of doing a stand-up presentation of any sort of like news or entertainment or lifestyle content as opposed to sitting down, what that, that psychological shift is. But anyway, I digress. I want to research better uh, for the movies that we talk about on Dead Air Podcast. We don't research, we don't script, you know, and I don't want to turn into scripting, but I do want to have a few more salient talking points because we are pulling a lot of stuff out of a hat while we're recording. It's not bad, but it's nice to come a little more prepared. And I'd like to come a little more prepared here, hence me writing notes down <laughs> today for recording this video, I suppose. Now, as far as podcasting, I listen to a lot of podcasts and I've found out by looking at the pod antenna apps statistics page, which I did not know existed. I have a huge, huge time vampire in my hands and its name is Podcastia. I listen to so many podcasts and I listen to some low quality podcasts and I subscribe to a lot of podcasts I don't even listen to anymore just cause I don't know. I just, I don't know. I like being subscribed to 50 podcasts, I guess. I don't know. But there are a lot of very long podcasts that I listen to, but I'm only like half listening to it. There's some podcasts that have fallen out of favor because the personalities have changed on the show or the structure of the show has changed. I do want to listen to more high quality podcasts leaning toward ad free content too. So uh, that'll probably increase my reading if I'm listening to less podcasts, right? I don't listen to audiobooks. I just can't. I'm one of those people that my brain meanders when I'm listening to fiction. And I've been listening to a lot of really cool true crime podcasts that are largely ad free. So I want to continue that trend, but just 
cherry pick some better ones. Of course, listening to podcasts is a lot of my lifestyle. I do a lot of coding as part of my work, and it's nice to listen to something while I'm doing things that I could do on autopilot. I don't want to fall asleep during my work or during housework and things like that, or even athletic or leisure activities where I can listen to a podcast. So I probably will still listen to lots of them, but lifestyle and lifestyle changes. This will be the smallest portion because I don't want to bore you with this sort of stuff. But my biggest goal that is bookish is to read a book in French. I've been taking French classes for quite some time. I'm going to be enrolling in another level of French very soon. And I've got a Yonesbo book in French. We have a Clive Barker book in French. I have a kid's book or two in French as well, but novels. I have two to choose from, two very cool ones. Both I've read in English before, which would help. Uh, I think that will be my goal is to read one of those, sit down and read one and comprehend it sometime this year. So it may be a year from today <laughs> that I actually achieve this, but I'd like to read a novel in French. Aside from that, I do want to wear a little bit better clothes. Now you may say, Lydia, you wear fine clothes. Uh, it's You look normal and fine and I'm comfortable in my clothes and maybe you can tell. I wear a lot of black and that's not bad. I do want to insert some color into my wardrobe. And that color is gray. Gray. Yeah, I, want to, I want to buy more clothes that are gray. And that's really, that's a big thing for me. I don't know if you really understand how big that is because I don't wear other colors really. I have a little bit of brown and I do have some like heather gray and stuff, but I don't really like it. And it's not the right color temperature for me. So I tend to not wear it. And I think this almost counts as a color because part of the black is kind of sheer. So that creates another color, doesn't it? That counts. Sheer black fishnet. That's a, another color, right? Maybe for 2024, I'll come up with some new merch. We have shirts and hats and of course the very famous pillow. Cozy, cozy pillow. Lace, lace, black lace. That's it. That's not black. That's a different color. There's different. There's something else going. It's a pattern, right? Okay. It is not just black, right? But gray, gray, gray can be pretty close to black. I think I'll be okay with that. And it can be pretty far from white. So yeah. I'll be introducing maybe some colors to my wardrobe. So we'll just see. I don't know how that goes. I think it's a fun, it'll be a fun hobby. And to round it all out, less social media. I've had a few of my closer friends uh, mention how I don't go on social media much. I'm not um, that person that is constantly posting or that if they post something, they're pretty sure I won't see it on social media. And that's very true. And I am pretty responsive though. So if someone messages me on social media, I am pretty responsive up to this last month. I've removed most apps off of my phone. About two months ago that began. And the first one was Facebook. And then of course, Discord left. And Discord has gradually left most of my things and I still use it for a few little things, but I don't use it very much at all. But yeah, uh, Twitter will probably be leaving soon because it's just annoying. Even though I kind of like some of the things that these apps bring to the table and Twitter for the most part, I like more than a lot of the other ones. I love Instagram. I have no problem with it. It will probably remain on my phone forever. I really like it. I, I want to grow to like threads, but I just don't like social media in general. So there's no point for me having any of these things. Reddit may be hard to let go, but Reddit is toxic AF. And you know, Goodreads, I don't have the toxicity problem on Goodreads. I just don't use it very often. Letterboxd, I wanted to use for the podcast. I rarely ever use it. So I might take all of that off my phone. I already have all notifications off and have for a very long time. A lot of all of these things come down to stress relief for a lot of people. For me, it's distraction relief. And I don't want things um, whizzing and winging and bleeping and blooping and flashing on my phone, in my face, or in my house, or in my desk. I, I, none of that. I really dislike it and always have. I had maybe some very stress worthy things happen when I was around turning 30 years old. And ever since then, I really put my foot down on comfort, time management, and happiness, stress relief. I don't do things that will stress me out. I simply don't. It was my decade of no. And then I entered a decade of yes, unfortunately. So, I mean, the stress started to ramp up a little bit, but I've always been very wary of it. And I may be someone that isn't very susceptible to burnout because I see it coming a mile off. 
and I start doing things to slow down. If you notice I made less videos, it's so that I don't crash and burn ever. Same with the podcast. We may take a lot of hiatus it's so that we never crash and burn because I am terrified of burnout. I do not like stress. After you hit a certain wall, your coping mechanisms shore up <laughs> that wall to make sure that it's never breached again, right? So I think that's part of it. So I'm going to be reading quite a bit less. I'm going to be making more videos. So maybe more of these conversational sit down videos. So I hope you enjoyed that. Over on Patreon at Bookworm Central, I had mentioned that I'm going to be doing more polls and that's something that it fell out of 2023 unfortunately i had a lot of fun doing them uh, but i was reading too many books i think now that i'm reading less books it makes a lot more sense to have help dictating what i'm going to read so i'll be turning to patrons at bookworm central again as usual and back here onto youtube for tiebreakers and maybe to help decide book of the month club because sometimes the book of the month clubs aren't always the best choices or it's books that I don't know, I haven't read or haven't read reviews on and maybe you have. So I'm going to be using the polls feature here and the uh, community posts feature to do that again. So that'll be coming back. That's something that's going to be coming back that changed last year. And otherwise last year there weren't a lot of changes. So if you think there's anything that you think I ought to be reading or something that you found at this channel that change your reading life that you just love this year definitely let me know in the comments and as well as what you're doing for 2024 if you're shaking things up or if you like myself and like crystal and like a lot of other booktubers are just taking a step back reading less reading long reading deeply and chilling out let me know down there in the comments Thank you so much for watching. Have a safe and happy holiday, however you celebrate and whenever. If you've already celebrated solstice, happy solstice. And of course, have an ooky, spooky day.